Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. And today I'm I'm pretty pretty dang excited because I have the the opportunity here to interview someone who I have followed uh, f for a while. A, a book that you you guys have heard me recommend so many times here uh, because it's such a good book, which is uh, which is called uh, the Millionaire Fast Lane. And so I have MJ DeMarco here. And uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna be talking about uh, about some of the, the topics. He's got a new book coming out that uh, that we'll, we'll be talking about a little bit as well. But uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I think that mo most people are that are that are in my audience really. I, I, there's a there's a big uh, emphasis on or, or want to, to try and retire early or to be financially independent. And this is this always comes up a lot. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited to have you here, MJ. Thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. So, um, so yeah. So maybe if you want to give a little bit more, you know, I, I gave you kind of an intro, but maybe if you want to tell a little bit more about yourself and kind of your your background uh, for those those who don't know you. Sure, sure. I started a internet company a long, long time ago, back in the old days of, uh, uh, you know, AOL. You got mail. Yeah. Um, started that company basically with no formal internet training. Uh, didn't go to college for uh, computer science or anything. Didn't have training in that respect. Uh, basically, tools available from the internet taught myself how to program uh, and built myself a tiny little company that was actually big enough to impact my life, but small enough not to, you know, kind of kill my life, you know, where you have to have 20, 30 employees and, and whatnot. So I owned that company for 10 years, actually was able to sell it uh, in the dot-com boom. And then that company that purchased it actually went bankrupt. And so I actually got to buy it back again. Nice. So owned it again for another, I don't know, six or seven years and I sold it again. So now the theme, the theme with all of that is I was able to do this again with no training, no money. I mean, I started with you know basically nine hundred dollars. So in that process, in that ten years, I owned the company. I was able to cash flow it, uh, five and six figures monthly profit, and sold it for a multi-million dollar valuation. And technically, I retired uh, thirty-five years early. And when I say retirement, I think it's important to mention that by retirement, I mean basically doing whatever you want. Not yeah. you know you're not on the golf course golfing every day, but you're doing what inspires you, what what you're passionate about. And uh, for me, that was writing. Right. So, and that's where the Millionaire Fast Lane came in, which is a book I wrote in 2000, 2011, I want to say. Uh, I wanted to write that book to basically expose just kind of all the I don't know if you're they're swearing aloud on your. Oh yeah, fucking <laughs> fucking go just, for it. <laughs> just, to, just to expose all the bullshit that is out there, mm. um, because when I looked back at my life and being able to have the fortunate ability to, you know, retire early, and when I say retire early, I'm not talking about happy poor. Because that's the big trend right now where, oh, I retired, but yeah, you're, you're, you know, you're killing roadkill. Uh, you're, you're picking up roadkill on the interstate and frying it up because you don't want to, you know, you're too cheap to go buy food. I'm talking about living a great life, you know, whatever you want in the house that's free and clear, you know, going out to eat whenever you want. When I look at that and what society tells you as opposed to what the reality is, they're two, two totally different things. So The Millionaire Fast Lane was the first book into that kind of world of exposure yeah yeah that's interesting that I, I think people get confused on the word retirement because i i retired myself at uh, about 33 years old and when i wrote that in my book i, I had to explain it because i was like retiring to me means that you don't have to work you you, you could you should, i'm not like just sitting on a beach all day I, i'm i'm running my business sure. but but I, I'm financially independent. I could I could quit and and live and I and, and I like what you said too about the, the difference between because I think there is you know not to not to call I mean because I I like the guy uh, but Mr. Money Mustache I, obviously he's he's at a higher level of of income now but he was one of those guys that came out there and it was like oh I retired on thirty thousand dollars a year which 
okay i mean that's great you bought your time mm -hmm. back but like right. that's like you said it's like <laughs> you're basically scraping roadkill off the road it's, it's not the best i mean there there's another option so i really liked i really like what, what you said in in the book uh, about yeah. that yeah um, it's a choice i mean work, work becomes a choice and you mentioned um uh the mustache guy and it's interesting because I'm sure he's making a lot more money now. Yeah. And that's because he's using a different equation. Exactly. He's using a fast lane equation and yet kind of selling the slow lane equation, which is, you know, pinch a penny from your ass and after 50 years, you'll be able to retire. That kind of duplicity and nonsense, which I, I just think is just the most ridiculous way of going about with your life because life is limited i mean you only have 50 60 70 years of life exactly yeah I, I really like what you said about in the book about the idea of of like being you know being essentially rich in a wheelchair like and you're like like where you're too old to enjoy it and that that really clicked with me a lot because because I, I was thinking about that i mean i did i i always wanted to retire young i started doing real estate investment when i was 19 and and I always thought that that was the fast lane until I read your book, and then I was like, oh wait a minute, this is still like this is like medium. It's still it's faster than like investing in the stock and an index yeah. fund and waiting fifty years, but it's still going to take a long time. And so it, it was kind of eye opening to see that there's a faster way. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's actually quite simple when you think about it because um, the most poignant aspect of the millionaire fast lane which often goes just to go, goes ignored. People miss the point totally. Yeah. And that is whatever you do with your career or your life, you attach yourself to an equation. Mm -hmm. So when you have a job, you attach yourself to an equation and math is the universe of the language of the universe. So the equation you attach yourself to when you have a job is whatever they decide to pay you. Right. So that's how much value you have, which is designated by another party and you know you're not going to get a raise oh we're going to raise you 300 percent this year that doesn't happen as opposed to with a business you attach yourself the right type of business a different type of equation where you can scale you know unlimitedly you can make 300 percent more next week you make 300 percent more next year and that's simply because you're attaching yourself to a different type of equation so that's what we all go through in there is to examine how can we change our universe? How can we change our equation so these unlimited gains or you know big gains can happen? When one one year you're making okay, I made fifty thousand this year, but the next you're making three hundred fifty thousand or four hundred thousand, and that all has to do with the equations we attach ourselves to. And the job a job market or a job is just the worst equation anyone can attach themselves to along with the stock market. That's another equation we attach ourselves to that is just poor because, you know, the stock market, you hope to make 10% a year and that's considered a good year. Well, you can't make a hundred percent in one year in the stock market it just doesn't happen. Right. It, it, at least if you're doing a wise investment <laughs> choice, like um, I, I, it's funny cause I, I get into it sometimes with people like, like I, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins and I, and I love his book money mastering the game, but I don't love the strategy because it's, it's like a good default strategy. Like if you're going to do it right. But, but it's, but when you sure. look at it, it's like, yeah, it's going to take you 50 years. And I think a lot of people don't really think about what it's going to be like to like, be waiting 50 years to it's it, it, to yeah. me it's like a, it's a very it's a very weak strategy because because like you said there's 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 a bounded upside there's it's you know with the business it's an unbounded upside you got i mean you could really ex accelerate but you, there's no you're never going to have that super super big gain investing in the s p 500 it's just sure. not going to happen yeah and, and ask yourself this too what's going to motivate you mm-hmm Knowing that you're due a two percent raise at the end of the year by your company, if they're nice, or leveraging your time into something that, hey, you know what? If if I really work my butt at this, there's a good chance I could make, you know, instead of ten thousand dollars a month, I could make eighty thousand dollars a month, a hundred thousand dollars a month, simply because my customer pool is so large. Right. So I mean, there's just that is terribly motivating too, because you you're you're not just working to pay the bills, you're working to change your life. And again, we come back to those equations again, get yourself into the right equations. So you're working 
not to pay bills, but to change your life. Right. Now, now one thing that I, that I'm curious about, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people that do different strategies, but so, so with the fast lane, you're, you're making a lot of money, you're, you're being able to retire, but then you've got to do something so that you can continue to get that money. So for me, like, for example, I, the money that I made a lot from business, I took it and I put it all in real estate. So I've got paid off houses and they generate so, so that it's a never ending pool. Do you, what's your strategy? Do you have, do you have real estate? Do you, do you have, I mean, you, Obviously, you're not advocating to, to start investing in the stock market, but do you invest in the stock market now and, and get dividends? Oh, absolutely. See, I don't, I'm not totally against the stock market. I'm against the stock market as a, as a vehicle for wealth. Right. I mean, if you look at the formal definition of the stock market, it says nothing about making you rich. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and yet that's how it's promoted. I use the stock market to create liquidity and income. Right. So for me, yes, I have a lot of money in the stock market, but it's not it's not necessarily stocks, it's dividends, dividend paying stocks, municipal bonds, things that pay me rent. Right. You get you get a you get a you buy a house and you get rent for someone living in there. Well, when I give out my money into the stock market, which is a just a capital market, I expect rent in return. And it's unfortunately or fortunately however you look at it it can be terribly boring right and that's the whole point i don't look at it as i'm not looking to get rich i'm looking to get paid for my money for renting it so i'm not looking for 10 percent. i'm looking for five percent exactly because a five percent return on ten million dollars is i believe it's like eighty thousand dollars a month right and that's yeah. without touching the principal and it's boring because it's it's municipal bonds, it's dividend stocks, it's nothing. I mean, I don't own any stocks in Apple. I don't own any stocks in Netflix or any of these high flying things. It's extremely boring because it's almost like Vegas. Right. I don't go to Vegas to make a killing. I go to Vegas to be entertained. Yeah. So it's that kind of how you approach it standpoint. Yeah, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense, and that's I mean that confirms what what I'm doing too. Is I'm sure. I mean right now I'm you know, making money from the business, but then taking that money and put it in that secure place where I'm getting the rent on the on the properties. For me, it's the properties. I, I really liked. I think in in the book you had this chart where it's like because it's funny because I think people show this compounding interest and they're like okay here's your 10 grand that you invested when you're 20 and then they show this compounding interest and I, and I believe that if I remember correctly you had a, a thing in there where you're like cut off the front part of that that compounding because why start with like when you have like a million dollars then compounding interest makes a lot more sense but all those like the the 20 years it takes for that 10,000 to become a million or whatever yeah. it is that's a waste just shortcut that and make a whole bunch of money and then and I think that's that to me that just made so much more sense yeah, because it takes, in order for that $10,000 to accumulate, it takes 40 years of your life. And let's, right. face, let's face reality. Most people don't start saving until they're 30 or 40. Right. So you don't even have access to that 40 years. It's like, uh, in my new book, the, the, the analogy I use, it's like you're on a sinking Titanic. And the compound interest blowhards will say, well, just relax. I mean, compound interest, the, the boat will be here in eight, eight hours to save you. Right. <laughs> the boat is sinking yeah. in two hours. Yeah. I, don't, I can't wait eight hours. I only have two hours. Oh, no, but the boat is effective. Yes, I understand the boat works. Right. I don't have eight hours because it's going to sink in two hours. I mean, it's, that's, in a nutshell, what compound interest is like. And... People buy it hook, line, and sinker, and you know that's what they're going to do. And it's better than nothing, but it just—I think it's one of the greatest scams of the century. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I, actually, so this would be kind of interesting to get your take on this because I, I wonder if we have a similar opinion. So, like, I'm very much against 401k. I actually cash out my 401k early and took the 10% 
hit on that mm -hmm. and invested that in real estate and in my business because I because basically what I said was like fuck this I don't I if I'm if I hit 65 and I'm not ridiculously rich if if the money that is in my 401k that compounded by that time means anything to me I really fucked up I'd rather go all in on mm -hmm. on being rich way before 65 but if I get there and I still haven't made it then fuck it I'm I'm not going down that road. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Because so many people like this is one of those things like my accountant, uh, you know, everyone I talk to, they're like, oh, you're you're ridiculous. You're stupid. You should be doing max yeah. investment in 401k. It's tax deferred. And I'm like, I don't care about money when I'm 65. I don't like at that point, right. I'll be I should be a billionaire or or at least, you know, multi deca millionaire. And, and that money won't matter. But they, they don't seem to get it. So, I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. But no, you're not. Your you're not wrong because you're 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 thinking like a fast laner as opposed to a slow laner. It's like someone just posted on my forum this example. Like if you want to, you know, you want to learn how to fly, don't ask a cheetah because he's going to tell you how to run. Right. You ask an eagle how to fly. And so that's what's happening when you're asking a slow lane prognosticator, you know, about 401ks and, and whatnot and deferred. I mean, those are great. I mean, if you have a, if you have a job and you have someone, you know, contributing, uh, matching funds and all that. Sure, that's free money. Take it. But, you know, I don't have an IRA or a 401k and, you know, I retired years early and it's just, it's just one of those vehicles of the slow lane that, I mean, you did look at some of the research on the 401ks, how they're just ripping people off. Oh yeah. The management fees. And a lot of people don't even know what that's all about. They just get a statement every month and they see, you know, a couple dollars they made and they don't know that half of it was already taken by the management fund. So that's a whole, that's a whole book in itself. Um, not an exciting book I would like to talk about, but yeah, that, that's actually, so I think Tony Robbins money master the game and then he did another one unshakable. It basically, it basically does that. It basically shows you where your, your mutual fund, you know, again, I don't that, you know, I like well, the book because he sh reveals that, but I don't like the strategy of 50 years. <laughs> here, here's, here's a good question. How is, how did Tony Robbins get rich? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, I, it, it wasn't from, investing. Is it from the advice in those books, compound interest, 401ks? No, he's attached to a different equation, isn't he? Exactly. He's not in the equation of intrinsic value and getting a job and getting a pay raise. He's in an he's in a un, he's in a scalable metric where he can sell many books, many seminars, many motivational courses, and that's how he got rich. And yet he's now he is selling this other strategy, which is not responsible for his wealth. So yeah. things that make it go, mm, interesting. Exactly. Yeah. It, I, I, it kind of reminds me too of like the, I think one of the very first things that you said in, in the millionaire fasting, which I thought was, was brilliant, which is the same strategy I have to use here because I'm, I'm, I'm teaching personal development to software developers is, is if I remember correctly, you said something along the lines of like, you, you came here, like the, the title is kind of cheesy, like millionaire fast lane. You, you came here thinking this, but I'm going to give you what you actually need. You know, this is what you came here to want, which, which I, I thought was, was, was pretty smart, but, but this is what you actually need. Need. And, and then you gave the the, the real wisdom there because I think a lot of people see that and they're like, oh, get rich quick. Yeah, I, I totally want to get rich quick. And then you give them the real wisdom that's actually going to to get them where they need to go. Yeah, I mean, I heard that a lot that uh, some people had to be recommended the book three or four times before they finally gave in and bought it because the title, you know, has has a air of get rich quick to it. Well, get rich quick is true. People right. get rich quick all the time. I consider I got rich quick. Get rich easy is what does not exist. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, how does Mark Zuckerberg become, you know, one of the youngest billionaires on the planet? He got rich. He got rich quick. Right. And it happens all the time just because you don't see about, I mean, you just said yourself, you retired early. Obviously, yep. you had to get rich quick in, a, in some fashion or another. It happens all the time. And just because you don't see it, on the front page of Inc. Magazine doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. I, I like that distinction between being, whether it be quick or, or easy or not. Cause I don't, I don't know very many people besides lottery winners who got rich easy. And even yeah. those lottery in, in the way that it comes is the way that it goes. I think also. <laughs> sure. But you, you think about it, 
the slow lane, you know, going, getting up at six in the morning, working Monday through Friday for 50 years, that's not easy either. No, no. So, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to take a hard road, why not take the road that has a dividend that can last you a lifetime? Yeah, that's a very good point. I think that's, it's interesting maybe to make the distinction too. like, one of the things, one of the reasons why I recommend your book so much, or I, I hand out your book to certain people is that I like what you called the sidewalkers, which these are the people that aren't even in the slow lane. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was, that was really interesting because I, I feel like, and it doesn't happen, but I feel like people should be able to read that and say, oh shit, that's me. Damn. But I give it to people who are sidewalkers and they, and they, they don't even recognize themselves in it. Uh, it, it just amazes me. Yeah, uh, I get a lot of that too. It's, uh, you know, people coming clean and saying, I'm on the sidewalk, uh, but I, I don't understand how you wouldn't know. I mean, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, but you know, you have the newest car, you have the newest shoes, you have the newest this, the newest iPhone. You know, my, my iPhone is three years old. Why do I need another one? I mean. People get a new iPhone every every year, and yet they're living paycheck to paycheck. That's the kind of insanity of the sidewalk. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And just just for for those of you that haven't read the book yet, definitely read the book for sure. Like, and this is one of those books to give out. This the sidewalkers are the people who are not even like the 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 slow laners are the people that are maybe investing in their four hundred one k right, and they're they're doing the regular job. They're 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 what we would consider wise people. Yes. Yes. But um, but but the sidewalkers are like the your idiot friend who just like gets a payday loan every. I, and I love how you called him out too. I like how like you're you're just like so like in your face about it. I love because you need that. Like it's like fucking wake up call. Like here here you go. Like this is what you're 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 a total loser. <laughs> in a lot of respects, my book uh. is talking is I'm talking to myself mm -hmm. thirty years ago. Yeah. So when someone sees, oh, you know, he's, he's an asshole or, you know, he's so blunt, they're hearing me talking to me 30 years earlier. Yeah. So, you know, my apologies if someone takes offense to that, but that's just me yelling at me. Well, it's good. I, yeah. And I think it's, I think a, a very strong message is, is, is what's needed to, to, you know, to wake, wake people up and realize it. And, and you, and especially, I think that, you know, the thing that, like I said, resonated the most with me was just that like so many people, I feel like that they're in the slow lane, they think they're doing everything right because their college counselor tells them they're doing everything right, their parents are proud of them, they're going to college, right? They're like, they think they're pillars of society and they almost feel like it's owed to them now that they're going to get rich someday. And and they're they're doing everything right by society's standards, but they're doing, but they're not like, you know, it, it, yeah. it's not the ideal. And the problem is, if you had an actuary go through the probabilities of them being able to retire very abundantly and nice, it's a very low percentage. I mean, we're talking about making sure you have a job, making sure you're always on, always employed, you're not laid off, making sure the stock market doesn't crash, making sure the money isn't hyperinflated, making sure your dollar is actually worth, worth enough money in 50 years. I mean, there's so many variables involved that if after 50 years you find out it doesn't work, guess what? There's no do-over. Yeah, yeah, you got There's no time. There's no do-over. You're done. And, and you have to continue to work or, or hope for, for a government handout or whatever else there is. It's just entrepreneurship is like playing baseball. You constantly strike out. You fail. You hit foul balls. But compound interest, you can't strike out because if you strike out, you're dead. Right, yeah. It's <laughs> time is gone. It's a one shotter, right? It's like, yeah. That's it. uh, yeah. And, and it's amazing how much faith people put in that and, and put in financial advisors who, who tell you this stuff. And, and I, you know, the first question I always ask financial advisors, what's your net worth? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's never, it's never a million dollars or more. It never is. I'm like, so how, how can you be the expert? <laughs> um, so, so one thing I wanted to ask about too is, um, okay, so I, I think, you know, it's, you, re, you read the book, you know, you have, a lot of people are not in their head. They're like, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. But then they're like, oh, but it's so risky to be an entrepreneur. Like, I don't want to, like, I just want to, like, 
I, I don't want to give up the the safety. You know, if I don't invest in my 401k, if I don't put my money in the in the stock market or IRA and get my compounding interest, and I take this shot as an entrepreneur, well, well, uh, I'm you know, well, how, how am I going to make it? What do you think about that, the, the risk? Because I think a lot of people, you know, I mean, I always, I think you got to have risk in order to, to make money. But, sure. but what, do you, what do you think about that as far as like, you know, is this advice you could give to everyone is, is what I guess what I'm saying. Well, I think if everyone is being honest, they would admit that the risk of the slow lane is equally as risky. Mm. I mean, you're, you're putting your entire fiscal future in the hands of some elements you can't control your boss, your company, the stock market, these are things you can't control. As opposed to having a business, there are some elements there you can control. And I hold that holding a job for 50 years and investing all your money into the stock market is riskier. So right. for those people that don't want to, you know, they don't want to acknowledge that risk, I can't help them. <laughs> I mean, they can continue to do what they want to do and take that risk. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that the risk is identical or worse in the slow lane. Now, as far as, uh, you know, starting a business, that is something that is, has to be treated, like I said, baseball. Right. You're going you're gonna to strike out a few times. It's not entrepreneurship as a career is not something that you try. It's right. something that you live. Exactly. You're yeah. going to strike out. You're going to follow. You're going to make some, you know, failures and whatnot. But eventually you start getting hits. You start getting some small wins and they start accumulating. You start growing your skill set. You start learning to live without this idea that, oh, my God, I don't have a paycheck. It's just about a different way of living. And that's kind of what I start going into in my other book. The next book, uh, Unscripted, is deviating from that script we're all sold that script since the moment we've been uh put into education and start going to school monday through friday we're right. given this script that we need to go get a job go to college graduate you know finance a 30-year mortgage because that's what the script tells you to do right yeah yeah that's it's, it's so true so many people <laughs> well and you and it, it's funny i i guess one thing too is like i mean sometimes you you know, I talk about this stuff, you talk about this stuff. And, and the, one of the biggest pushbacks I get from people is, well, oh, you're not an expert. How come every other expert says this? How come all these financial advisors, how come the people on CNBC, they tell me that, you know, here's my, my retirement calculator and here's the wisest thing to do. And, the, and all these smart people, econo economists and, and all these financial advisors, they, you, are you telling me you know more than them? This is what, what I get all the time. And I, I'm sure you, you probably get that too. What's you your, know. yeah. I mean, you're, you're living by, you are leading life. You're not, life is not leading you. Uh, you've retired early. You, you, you're working by choice. You're doing things that inspirits your soul. Yes, you are the one that we should be listening to. Not the guy that's getting up at five in the morning every day, Monday through Friday, and telling you to invest in mutual funds because he's not doing what he wants to do, more than likely. You are. So, yes, you are the person to listen to. That, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's, yeah, that's, it's, <laughs> it's true. I guess you can look and see what is the person doing what they're, what they want in life. And, uh, you know, having that free, I, I mean, the, having that freedom is, is so amazing. It's, I, I, I've been scripted. I mean, my whole life I've been told what to well, do, yeah. you know, and, and it, I didn't know there was another way. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's actually been research. There's actually been uh, research that shows autonomy. Uh, you know, being able to do what you want and, you know, make your own choices and decisions, that is 50% of your happiness quotient. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. When you can control your destiny, or at least you have a feeling you can control your destiny, life is so much happier. And oh, yeah. that's why even if you own a business and it's, you know, it just pays the bills, you can save a little bit, just having that autonomy alone is enough to create some incredible happiness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just reading. Um, I think it's called uh, "Stumbling on Happiness," and and the the guy goes into the studies and he and he shows that that it it really is like autonomy is is so important. And it's funny now, like looking at the perspective now, 
I think I would, I've always said that like freedom is so important to me now. I'd rather live a much, I'd rather like, you know, sleep on a mattress on the floor and have be free and be able to do what I want than to make a whole bunch of money and be belong to someone else. Oh, absolutely. In that case, we, we would rather be happy poor <laughs> because, exactly. we're, because we're free. And that's the role that autonomy and freedom uh, has. So that's very important to know. Now, what do you think about, um, so one, another pushback that I get from a lot of people on this is they say, well, you know, everyone couldn't do this because if everyone did this, it, the, the world is just like, not everyone could become a millionaire and start a business. There's just not enough room. There'd be too much competition. What do you say about that pushback? That sounds like that person's resigned itself, resigned himself to mediocrity already. So let him do it. I right. have no problem with that. Uh, someone like that is the kind of guy, the kind of person I would hire, the kind of person you would hire, because right. they've already resigned to the fact that they can't do it. But that is true. I mean, everyone, everyone can't do it because the world needs employees. The world needs people who are going to be obedient to the system. And, you know, that's part of the reason I wrote these books is to, to show people the system that they're being obedient to and to let them know that there's another choice out there. And if you don't want to accept that choice and you want to remain in the system because everyone can't do it, then go ahead. I have right. no problem with that. But the fact of the matter is everyone is not going to do it because the script is alive and well and keeping and keeping cattle into the system. The, you know, the rat race needs rats. The slaughterhouse needs lambs. And the right. script is going to make sure there is plenty of those people into the system. I um, mean, it's sad to talk about it in this way, but in effect, that's what it is. It's it's we're chattel for the government, uh, you know, to so they can print money and go crazy and spend like a drunken sailor. So, I mean, that's I go in that and I go into that too with the with my next book a little bit as well. So, um, it, it, it's just amazing the the kind of scams that are being pulled over our eyes. In the world today yeah yeah and i guess that brings an, an interesting question which is what do you think you know i think there's some there, there's you know some people that say that it's a conspiracy like they're it's orchestrated and then there's other people that say well it's it's just how it is like no one's really doing this it's just it's just what it what it evolved to do where do you sit on that scale uh well in truth we're all free-range slaves Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the truth. Uh, stop paying your taxes. See what right. happens. <laughs> See, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you're in California, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, take, take the license plate off your car. Go driving around for an hour. See what happens. Right. Uh, you know, try to leave the country without a passport. Right, that's yeah. Your, the country is your cage. You're a free-range slave. Um, I own a house. I paid cash for it. Beautiful house. If I stop paying my property taxes, the house is going to go bye-bye. Exactly. And, yeah, you, you don't know, really own it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. But if I stop paying it, my house is gone. If I stop yeah. paying IRS taxes, I probably will be put in jail. So we're all slaves to the system. And I am trying to alert people to this system and how it works so we can live how we want to live within that system and not be a, a slave to it, which is pretty much the script is there to enforce the slavery into the debt, into the jobs, into this and that. So you can have your 50 year existence, pay bills and then die. Right. I mean, this is, this is we're starting to go on a tangent here, but this is, this, this is truth. I mean, there's stop paying your taxes and you see what happens. I mean, this is not, people don't want to think about it, but it's the fundamental truth of our world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and, and I think that, I mean, seeing reality clearly is really important because it is, it's true, we're playing a game, the game has rules. And you, some people try to say, I don't want to play the game, but you can't opt out. No, you can't, you can't. <laughs> so you might as well learn the best way to play it. That's going to be most advantageous. With I mean, here, here's, a, here's something that really opens people's eyes up is Monday through Friday. Uh -huh. Do you know Monday through Friday or, or, or week name, name day, Saturday, Sunday? There is no celestial reason for that. 
Meaning if aliens came to the earth, they wouldn't recognize Monday or Saturday. They just would see, okay, the earth rotates once every 24 hours. There's right. a day, but there are no Sundays or Mondays. Your dog doesn't know the difference between if it's Tuesday or Sunday. This is a human construct to create order. And think right. about it. Since the day you were five, five or six years old, you started in that construct by going to school Monday through Friday. The perfect foreshadowed assimilation of what was to happen for the rest of your life started at five years old. Monday yeah. through Friday, you're going to do things you really don't want to do on Monday through Friday. And that Saturday and Sunday, don't worry, that's for you. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's the system. And people don't even observe that, that, okay, Monday is a Saturday and Sunday is a Tuesday. They're all the same. Exactly. Yeah. And it's so hard to get that out of here. I mean, even now as an entrepreneur, even as someone who's who's retired, like, like I still, I still think that, okay, tomorrow's Friday <laughs> and it'll, it'll be the, it'll be the weekend coming up. And, uh, and it's so, but, but I think, you know, one, 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 one thing that I've, I've thought about about that is that like so many people are living their lives for the weekend or they're like, their life is on most of their life. They're not living or enjoying. And sure. they're just, they're just getting through it. They're getting through it until five o'clock till the bell rings till, till Friday afternoon, till the weekend or till they get their vacation. And that's, to me, that's a sad way to live for, especially for 50 years. Yeah. And think about that. Think about that too, in terms of money. When you, when you give away your money, you expect interest. Right. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. And after one year, I expect $12 back, 12% interest and my hundred dollars back. Right. Yet with time, it's totally different. You give away five days a week, Monday through Friday, so you can get Saturday and Sunday. Except you don't get your Monday through Friday back. It's gone. Right. So it's a negative rate of return. So it's not even an investment. It's an immediate rate of return that is lost because you can't reclaim lost time. So it's not an interest payment. So it's a lost rate of return that in the financial world, if it was presented that way, it would never work. People would never do it. But with time, it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll waste five days a week so I can get two. Perfectly yeah. acceptable. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I always try to think of it in terms of like, like I, I tell young people to invest their time to make money and then later they can trade the money for time <laughs> because it, cause it's yeah. like, you know, so I think people have it ba so, so backwards and they're they're just trying to get, through time but i see this as, well if you're investing it depends on where you're spending the time right because like when you're working for someone else you that's not an investment but if you're well, doing things that have a long tail at building your business well i like to say there's nothing wrong with spending time building a business but make sure you're going to get paid money and time yeah because that's the time is the is the more important thing uh, a good example is you know we're doing this this discussion here right now You'll probably put this on YouTube or you know your your website, and it will be it will exist in per, 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 okay perpetu perpetuity. I knew exactly. I could say. It will <laughs> exist in time. Right. So while I'm off doing whatever, you know, people are going to come by. Someone may watch it and say, "Oh, I'm going to buy his book." He's you know, it sounds interesting. See, that's working. I'm spending time now, but. That time I'm spending now is also working for me into the future, as are all the videos you've done. Those exactly. are all out there. You don't know when people are going to watch them. Those are those. It's what I call legacy value. You're creating value, but it has legacy because once you're done creating it, it still exists. So I've gotten interviews, uh, requests to do interviews on the radio, and I decline them because once they're done, they're gone like a fart in the wind. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, like podcasts I like doing because they exist in perpetuity where they can always work for you and create value while you're off doing something else. That's how you get paid time and money. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That makes a lot. Of, in fact, that's why I invest so much time in, in doing this kind of stuff. Sometimes people are like, well, why are you doing so many YouTube videos? It doesn't make so much money. And I'm like, well, you know, I could, I could, I could bill and work for $500 an hour, maybe as you know, and, and bill people that, uh, but 
or I could spend that hour making a YouTube video and maybe that's not going to make a lot of money. But if I do that a lot of like, but, but over the next 10 years, that's going to make more than $500. Sure. It, it, it's uh, it all starts to aggregate up. You know, you yeah. can build your audience. Uh, you have a book to sell that uh, has value. Um, it's all, it's all like your shirt says, it's all part of the process. Respect. That's what I knew I wanted to interview you when I saw your shirt that said, respect the process. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a, so many people are so focused on results. I think is is it's it's such a you can't control results no matter how good you are, <laughs> but you can yeah. indirectly control them by doing the the thing that you know you're supposed to do. Um, yeah, you just push just push value out into the marketplace and let the marketplace tell you. Okay, we like it, we hate it. You suck. You're great. I mean, let them tell you what you know what what they want to tell you. So here's the big the big question I think that that so many people have. So my my audience, a lot of software developers, a lot of people that are working their regular nine to five job, right? And, and you know, respectable. You know, it's not a you know they're they're not those sidewalkers, but they yeah. like to do the fast lane. They don't believe they can do it. They don't know how to do it. What what did what would you say? Like someone is they're watching this, they're listening. They're like, okay, what you guys are saying makes sense. I want this life. I want to to do this. What should they do? What steps should they take to make that transition to go from slow lane to fast lane? Well, first of all, let me say that if I had to pick, if I had to start over again, go to college or, or you know, just begin again, and I had to pick what I would focus on, it would be software development. Yep. So I think if you're a software developer, you have the perfect skill set to change your equation and morph yourself into a fast lane type of structure because you have the ability to create value through computers which right. exists on its own so not many people can do that so the ability to do that is an incredibly powerful tool and uh when i hear you know software developers say well i, I don't know what to do it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me because they're like house builders they can build houses after houses, after houses, after houses, and then rent them out and always have, you know, an income coming in. So as far as where, where to get started, I always say start with your need. Start with your solution. Mm -hmm. Everything starts with you're solving a problem or you're doing a, you're solving a problem that's not being solved very well. And, and usually in entrepreneurship, that's where the opportunity is. I call them uh, dissecting the value array where people are, people are not performing in a certain area like amazon they have great customer service for the customer but as a business owner they're the worst customer service you could ever imagine yeah yeah so that's an opportunity in that particular area so anywhere you look to find an opportunity you're looking for def you're looking for faulty value attributes that aren't being uh properly filled so it all begins with the solution because once you have the solution you know where you need to go next. It's like it's like if you do not know arithmetic and you're given the problem two plus two. Okay, I don't know arithmetic, but you have a problem, two plus two, what is that? So now you know your next step. Either you learn arithmetic, right, right. you find somebody that knows arithmetic, you hire somebody that knows arithmetic. So all your all the next steps become outlined for you based on the problem you're trying to solve. Oh, two plus two is four. Great. What's the next problem? What's the next solution? Right. Then you go research, find, solve. Everything is is led from that point, from the solution you seek to solve, or the solution you seek to improve. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. That, that, that makes sense. sense. It's funny. I was just thinking, as you were saying that, I was like, man, I just bought this T-shirt that I'm wearing. It's like this company called Barbell Athletics. And I was like, there's not t-shirts for guys that lift weights that are fit, right? And it's like, so they, they, they basically did that. They solved that problem. It was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, per that's a perfect example. Uh, I mean, you got the guns going and, and, and I used to, when I used to work out heavy like that, you know, I used to. <laughs> oh yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would look for shirts like that too, and they wouldn't be out there. They'd be the, you know, the big baggy ones that look like yeah. they're in a tent. I mean, that's exactly an example of finding a solution or finding a problem and providing a solution. Another thing in the same realm is I used to uh, uh, drink pre-workout, and they always had artificial colors, red 40, red 90, 
yellow 60, sucralose, acrobis sulfate, whatever crap. And I never wanted any of that crap. So right, I stopped yeah. buying it. So there you go. There's another problem. Hey, let's provide a pre-workout that has natural flavors, has natural colors. That's a perfect example of being led by a problem. Now, now with the uh, with the analogy of getting up to bat a lot as an entrepreneur, because this is definitely something I have experienced. I mean, I I fail all the time. <laughs> People don't see that I fail all the time, but I do. But but I had I have a lot of hits too. Sure. Uh, so so I'm always so, so like someone wants to do this. They they found their problem. What do they do now? Do they go and you know mortgage their house, quit their job, take all the money and savings, and say gonna gonna solve this problem, or is there a better way? you know, to, to, to do this, to even out the volatility, I guess I would say. Well, first of all, if you're developing something software related, usually the, the cost is going to be related to software development. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you already know that skill, you've knocked out a big portion of the risk, which is, you know, someone like me, if I said, Hey, I got this great idea for a, you know, a web app or something, I would have to go hire somebody or learn it myself. And right now I don't feel like learning it myself, so I would go hire somebody and that would be very expensive. So right there you're knocking out a big portion of the of the the risk. And uh, it's so possible today that you can you can launch something, you can have pre-orders, you can have people pre-selling it so there's no risk. Hey, you know, uh, you know, a beta a beta launch or a freemium model where they get to try it or they can upgrade it with uh, with a fee. There's just so many options available to us that you don't need to quit your job uh, to be doing these things. This is, could all be done in your spare time if, as long as we're willing to, you know, hey, I, I can't watch Game of Thrones when I want to watch Game of Thrones or, or whatever else they're doing. It's just you have to be committed for it because interest is not enough. Everyone's interested in financial freedom and being free. But not everyone is going to commit to it, and that's what you have to do. You have to set your expectations that right. this is my life now, and I'm going to die for it. Yep. And and what do you think about those people that say, yeah, I hear this all the time, and I think they're well-meaning, mean, but I hear a lot of successful people say, they say, well, what, what would you tell your younger self? And they say, I wouldn't have worked as hard. I would have, I would have taken more leisure time and not, not, not worked those 60-hour weeks building up my business. And uh, and I kind of laugh because I'm like ah, I think you you forgot what it what, what paying your due like what it took you to get now you could do that but sure. what do you think about they, that because you know, <laughs> they probably wouldn't even be in that position had they taken that advice right uh, you know I I like to say balance is bullshit yeah. <laughs> balance, yeah balance what is balance it's in the middle right it's it's mediocrity it's ordinary that's balance. I look at my life and I say, you know, what do I have to thank for the life I have now? And that's because I wandered into the the area of the obsessed. Yes. So yeah. imbalance will can lead to balance. So I have a balanced life now, but imbalance is what gave it to me. Yeah. So you have to be willing to wander into the land of the obsessed in order to get what you want. I'm not saying you have to stay there permanently because that's not healthy. It's not healthy right. for your relationships, but it does require that you need to be obsessed with whatever you want and then periodically come out of that and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah, totally, yeah. I don't know anyone who's been successful that hasn't gone down. But I think, but so many young kids today are looking for that shortcut. They want to be able to say, well, I'm just going to do like 30 hour weeks or whatever. And it's like, no, you could <laughs> work your full-time job and then you work your next full-time job, which is starting your business. And then and you, and that's how you get it off the ground. There's just not a, I don't know, the, the easier way. See, see the market, the market is an incredibly efficient machine. If you're going to work 30 hours a week on your business, you know, that has some success, you're going to get killed by the person working 60 hours a week. Yes. Or the company that has hired more people or or so eventually that will dwindle away. That's why I think passive income is a big myth. Mm -hmm. You can have passive and that's one of the reasons why I sold my company because I knew passive income was a myth and that enjoying this six figure passive income stream was going to go bye bye unless I ramped up, hired more people, did this, did that, because it's a myth. So I, I ultimately decided, hey, I'm gonna sell this. And I can get passive income for life 
through, you know, municipal bonds or a dividend paying stock or, 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 or in a real estate investment or something, because that's not fleeting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's so very true. I think there's, there's another group of people that are bootstrapped entrepreneurs that think their business is just always going to generate them income. And, and it's kind of sad when their business eventually fails because, you know, not everything has a shelf life. And then, sure. and then they got nothing else. They didn't take that money and they didn't put it into something more stable for the to, to kick off to rent. Like you said, I think that's a good, something that they can rent out. Sure, but they got a nice Audi. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so um, I, w- I want to make sure we definitely talk uh, real, real quick uh, about your, your new book. I- I'm excited to read this. Uh, you said you'll send me a copy, so I'm super excited to, to get, a, get a copy and, and read it. Uh, so it's called Unscripted. I want to talk a little bit about kind of that and where when people can get it, where they can get it, where you'd, where you'd like them to go. Sure. Uh, it releases May 23rd. Uh, okay. Just go to Amazon or your favorite book website. It should be there, no problem. And it, it will be available in audio, audio book for people that want nothing to do with books. Uh, that will also be available May 23rd. It's unscripted, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Entrepreneurship. There are several books out there titled like that, so make sure you find the one by MJ DeMarco. Um, and it's a long, super long book, 400 plus pages. Fast Lane was equally as long, and that's because I don't write books. I don't write books to enlarge my income streams, which is a big author thing now, is to write a book every three months and you enlarge your passive income stream. I write a book once every three years, and it takes me three years to write the damn book. <laughs> so, because I do that because I'm looking to change lives. I'm not looking to, uh, you know, here, here, I, here, I make another thousand dollars a month because of this book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. That's funny that so many authors think they, you know, writing a book's not a good way to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, awesome. Yeah, I, I'm excited to check it out. We'll put some links uh, in the in the video for people to, to go go check it out. And uh, if I can ask you one one last question here, uh, since since we're on the topic of books, what kind of what books would you recommend? I mean, obviously, I'm going to say Millionaire Fastlane to, to everyone. I, I always recommend that. But what what other you know? I always like to know top top books that someone successful recommends. I recommend the book. I recommend the book that's going to get you to the next step. Okay. So I don't know what that is for any particular person. Um, it's like the arithmetic thing I said before. If you have the problem of one plus one and you don't know what that is or two plus two, you're going to read a book on arithmetic. Yeah, that's, that's what you true. need to learn. So yeah. uh, insofar as general book, I mean, Zero to One by uh, Gary Keller is a great okay. book about focus. Uh, the Compound Effect, uh, oh, yeah. like Darren Hardy. Again, this is, these are all things related to process. and. Yeah giving up the idea that there is no shortcut. The shortcut does not exist, and usually people struggle because they're looking for a shortcut that doesn't exist. So their, sh- their struggle is not to do with the struggle. The struggle yeah. is, I can't find the shortcut. That's the struggle. So once you get that out of your head, a lot of things start clearing up. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, good, good recommendations, and uh, I, I totally agree with looking for the not looking for the shortcut <laughs> in life all right well uh well thank you i mean this has been awesome it's been uh it, it, it's pretty cool to be able to uh to talk to someone who who uh who, who who's changed your life who who i feel like has changed a lot of people's lives so uh yeah i appreciate what you're doing and and i appreciate also that you're you're, you're writing the books i mean to change lives and that's uh, that's that's so key uh you know so uh definitely and I appreciate you taking the time Thanks. I appreciate you having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care.